Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to living your juiciest life ever. So happy that you're listening in for those weekly conversations with amazing women that have come from a place of whether it's selflessness uh, or moving to self-fold, whether it's self-loathing to self-love, whatever that story might be, to inspire and encourage and help you to believe that you can live from that self full place where you own your voice, you claim joy, and you step into that amazing creative creature that you are and have been created to be living from that juicy space. Today, I get to welcome a friend, as well as an amazing professional that I have had the opportunity to do some work with that truly makes a difference out there in the world. And she is a master at mindset. And when you think of that, sometimes hmm, I think everybody has a bit of a different perspective. To work with Suzanne, though, is to, is to work in a space of love, support, strength, uh, joy, um, integrity and steadfastness. There is more words I could actually describe, but I'm, I'm going from, I'm, I'm going back into memory of our interactions and our connections together. And she truly has been an inspiration for so many people as well as myself. And I truly respect and honor who you are, Suzanne. And I want to welcome you to the show. And then we're going to do a little quick bio after that. <laughs> So welcome, Suzanne. I'm so happy you're here. And I really appreciate you taking the time out to uh, share with us today, uh, to share your energy and your vibe. Okay, I am so blessed to be here. And it is wonderful to hear you and to spend some time with you. And thank you for that wonderful introduction that you know, I love the heartfelt introductions. And that is who you are. That's who I know you to be just all heart. So thank you. And speaking of heart, thank you, <laughs> Suzanne, of course. And I'm sure many, many times people have used reference of that. But Suzanne is actually known for her breakthrough strategies that help entrepreneurs, leaders, and busy professionals to overcome fear, navigate change, and develop the mindset to respond and innovate when faced with change, conflict, and crisis. The Mindset Mastery Mentor, Suzanne, is also an author, an inspirational speaker, and a master trainer. And I know her as all of, that, of those above. With over 15 years of experience leading and developing teams, Suzanne has delivered training in leadership development, diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as crisis and change management. Five words that best describe Suzanne are integrity, health, freedom, leadership, and community. Her core message is the first person we each must lead is us. Suzanne knows what it takes to help her clients develop unstoppable mindset. She has created seven mindset mastery principles to equip individuals and teams with tools to reset their thinking. And her goal is to help you develop the emotional intelligence, habits, and communication skills needed to create massive results. So she's committed. She's to committed to building a team culture where collaboration is encouraged. She believes that our differences and unique gifts make our teams stronger. Our mindset and character are the catalysts that ignite skills, shift attitudes, and build relationships. So unlocking leadership, potential, embracing vulnerability, and giving up perfection. Mm -hmm. Those are so huge. So I'd actually, that takes me right to our, the first question, because it really links with um, you coming to Canada, your mom bringing you to Canada and what the perceived expectations were that you heard that took you down the path that you went on. So maybe you can share a little bit about coming to Canada and what you felt those expectations were and what happened as a result of that? <laughs> Did you, you know, it's the word perfection, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother, my mother brought us to Canada when I was five years old. And, um, and when we got here, I remember her saying that I brought you here for a better life and a better education. 
And it's interesting how you interpret things as a child. And my interpretation of it was if I went to school and I got good grades and I graduated and I got a great education, I would live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Uh Yes, happily ever after. So I tell people I became the overproducer. I'm an elite athlete. I excel in in a bunch of sports. Um, I have seven years of post-secondary education. I graduated and went to work in my field, which is, you know, uh, social service, family, individual group counseling. I'm a crisis counselor by profession, climbed that proverbial ladder um, and was considered at the top of my game, but hit my head on that ceiling and found myself physically exhausted and financially upside down. And the moment for me was being at work, managing a team of, of crisis workers, 30 professionals, and finding myself in crisis and standing at the bottom of a set of stairs, Kate, unable to move my body up the stairs. And at that point, I'd been going back and forth to the doctor because I'd lost about 10 pounds of lean muscle. My mental clarity was going. I was on an emotional roller coaster and it was not good at home. We were $50,000 upside down in credit card debt. At one point, we had a lean on our house three boys doing all sorts of activities all over the city. Um, My marriage is falling apart and I am suffering. I am absolutely suffering. And and I, I have to say, I was angry. I was pissed off, I was angry. And the reason was I bought the myth. I drank the Kool-Aid. I did what mama said. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what was wrong like why isn't it working but i did what most people do i prayed for an answer please give Mm -hmm. me an answer and then one day i'm at home and i get a call from a mutual friend susan and Mm -hmm. she says suzanne i have found the perfect opportunity for us it is going to set us financially free it is going to be amazing and i was thinking what on earth is this woman talking about and Pry took over and I said, girl, I'm good. And I put down the phone. Well, she knew the truth and she called me day one, day two, day three, seven phone calls later. And on the seventh call, she brought a friend. And, um, and all I remember them saying, Deborah said on the line, we're gonna build this to six figures. We'd love to do it with you, but we will do it without you. And in that moment, Kate, it was what if. What if this is it? What if? What if this is what can set me free? What if this was the answer I'm praying for? What is? So I said, okay, I'll take a look. And I took a look and it was my leap into network marketing where we, we both. That's met. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and everything began to change. And I think that the things that I took away was that I really got the understanding between working hard and working smart. And we hear it all the time, but network marketing got me into understanding the power of leverage, understanding the power of distribution, understanding the power of leveraging your time, your money, um, you know, your productivity, all those different things, delegating, building teams in a really new way. That was one piece, but the ah, go ahead. So I want to interject there because I want to bring you back to something. You were so burnt out. You were so exhausted. You were so empty. And so like you were so at the end of your rope. The fact that you actually, even after seven phone calls said, yes, how did you get there? How did you get to that? Yes. Because that's like from that emptiness, like, something must have hit you upside the head that because it's like don't even talk to me like I don't even know I can get my ass out of bed tomorrow morning that's what it sounds like right it, it, so. it, it was it was in many ways but this is the thing sometimes the pain of where you are mm. is greater than the pain of not knowing where you're going no. and I thought anywhere has to be better than right here because this cannot be it I can't keep going like this. I can't keep going like this. And I didn't have an answer and they seem to have one. So rather than sit here, I decided I'm going to go, go check out over there. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember mustering up the energy 
to go check out over there. But this was the interesting thing. As soon as this new opportunity entered my life and it began to feed me, I, there was new energy, there was new life. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I began to have hope again. I began to see possibilities for myself. I began to feed myself in, in an emotional, spiritual, psychological way that wasn't happening before. And it energized me. This is the big breakdown, breakthrough piece that's so important for the listeners to hear because we as women, because it's our nature to nurture, whether it's in our jobs, whether we have children or we don't have children, is that we put ourselves last. Absolutely. And so what happens very often is, is that we go through our young adult life through a part of it till we get to frustration, anger, resentment, right? Because it's like, I just gave and gave and gave and I gave and I gave and I didn't get anything back because we have this hidden expectation that we're going to receive it back. But it is our job. And that's why it's so difficult sometimes to even explain to people, you have to put your own oxygen mask on first. Absolutely. You know, I used to, I went through a period too that, uh, where it was like, going to all these networking events and talking about business and how things had changed. And it's like, you can't talk about sales and you can't talk about this and you can't talk about that. And you have to give people more value. And how are you unique? And I'm like, would you like me to cut off my left arm? Right. If I, if I, if I like, you want me to give more? <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Right. And so well, where yeah. you got to go ahead. And, and, you know, well, and the epiphany for me was that, the pain that I was in was self-inflicted, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And, and, and so when you talk about putting your oxygen mask on first, I, I use the analogy of filling my own cup up mm -hmm. first. Yes, and me too. From the overflow that's in the saucer mm -hmm. versus giving from the, so from the cup. And my realization, Kate, was that my identity, who I saw myself to be in the world was wrapped up in doing, giving, finding answers, juggling multiple plates, being superwoman. And the question was, if I actually stopped and no one needed me, who would I be? Who would I be? And there was a part of me that resented giving. There was a lot of me that resented giving. However, that's what I knew. And that's how I saw my value in the world. Mm -hmm. As I took my leap of faith and I found something that I wanted, I couldn't give in all these different places and do this thing. So what it had me become present to is choosing what I wanted for the first time in probably my whole life. Choosing what I wanted and figuring out how to get it all done and choose what I wanted. And the thing I say to people is two things can't coexist in the same place. Therefore, something had to give, something had to, to go. And that was the first time I actually began to ask, that is the word, ask for this thing called help, this thing called support, this thing called, and surprisingly enough, all the extra I was doing, I learned could be done by other people. And suddenly I had this space in my life for me. And what was more, even more interesting was people respected me more. Mm -hmm. People looked at me as someone who was valuable and people actually enjoyed contributing. So my boys got you know, tasks and assignments and things they had to do at home. My, my, the grandparents came and helped carpool and do all these things and take the boys to all their activities. My mother-in-law started bringing over a meal, you know, every once in a while. My team at my job, I started delegating tasks and they took so much pride in be, being able to do parts of my job because they were learning and growing. So my aha was that 
it didn't have to be done by me. It just needed to get done. And suddenly I was doing more, working smart by delegating and engaging people versus working hard rather than being the rat in the wheel chasing the proverbial cheese. So that's a really massive shift because or very often because you lived in that space of in being in social work, right? So that constant place of giving more and more for, and then from that empty cup as opposed to full cup and then moving into something new, you would think that you would take that with you and repeat the same pattern, but you shifted the pattern. Well, this, this is what happened. So when I first jumped in, I did take it with me. Mm. And nothing happened in my network marketing building. Absolutely nothing happened because network marketing is not the concept of do it all yourself. That's called a job. And that is, has nothing to do with your network. And so after about a year of banging my head against the wall and watching, I became coachable and I became, I surrendered to this process over here. And what I began to realize was you can't win in this arena by doing it all. You win by surrendering it and allowing people to share the load with you. Oh, big aha, big new piece of information. And in network marketing, we both know there's this thing called duplication. And you win by duplicating yourself, your leadership capacity in other people. Mm -hmm. But when I began to understand that and my income over here began to grow, I took that and started doing it over in the other side. Mm -hmm. And that business started, my, like my, my work started to go, what on earth are you doing? I was taking what I was learning over here and bringing it over here it shifted my thinking, my mindset around what it meant to contribute. It shifted my mindset in the concept of, you know, when, when, you know, it's, it's, it, when there's a giver, there's a receiver. And if you're not give, if you're just giving and never on the end of receiving, it's imbalanced. Mm -hmm. so it was this new dynamic that I was, playing with and experiencing that was like, oh, this is powerful. Amazing. Uh, you need to write a book on what that really means in that business, because it's really difficult to receive and understand mm -hmm. it and also to teach it. So I mm -hmm. think that there's a huge opportunity there for you. <laughs> you. Just what you did right there. Huge, huge. Thank you. <laughs> so it, it's, it's so interesting because, I mean, through all of the questions that are coming up for me, it's such a, a flow of just this, this opening through the story, the psychology. Okay, so you mentioned something about um, this, what you're doing now. And, uh, and I said, oh, save that, save that, save that, save that for the, for the podcast. And that was... The, you're teaching the psychology of speaking mm -hmm. and you're teaching the psychology of storytelling. Yeah. And so what's happening for people is different than where, what they're learning, what they've been learning up until now. So maybe we could get into some details about that because what you, we've already been talking about, um, everything that you've been talking about is it's definitely linked to psychology. Of course, uh, your ability to, uh, express and explain it is such a huge gift, such Thank a huge you. gift. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear about the results that you've experienced through learning your own conversation. Cause now coming from a full place, how has the conversation changed publicly mm -hmm. and personally, and then how in the mindset mastery that you're doing with the psychology of storytelling and speaking, how has the impact change happened for other people? You know, what, what has really changed for me is I've probably become a lot more open. 
And of course, you know, being raised in a, a, a black home where you're taught, don't put your business on the street, don't speak about what goes in our home. I kept everything, you know, close to my chest. And so I remember when I first started speaking in network marketing and they would encourage me to tell the story. And I'd be like, I can't tell the story. You don't understand. And, but through some coaching, thank you, Mr. David Wood, I learned to tell my story and realize that when I told my authentic, true story, that people saw themselves through my story. People connected with me through my story. And what I really took away was they didn't connect with me through my content. They connected with me when I told my authentic, vulnerable, real life story. Mm -hmm. That to me was an aha. So when I started speaking more broadly, I would be the speaker that would always open with my story and I'd tell my authentic story. And what would happen was it was like the distance between my, myself and the audience disappeared. And then I would train and then I would make an offer and people would be interested, although I really didn't know what, how to sell from the front of the room. And, and so over time, people kept asking me, do you teach that? Teach what? That thing you do on stage, what thing do I do on stage? <laughs> that storytelling thing. And so I began to look at it. And it was when I started doing a copywriting course, my, the person who mentored me, her name was Dr. Venus Opal Reese. She had this statement called, your mass creates your message. Okay, aha moment, mm -hmm. aha moment. And what I began to realize was why stories work is because we connect in our pain. We connect in our messiest mm -hmm. places. And really what your and my client want to know, the psychology behind it, is that I'm, they're saying to you, I feel vulnerable in this messy place that I'm in. And I need to know that someone understands this messy, vulnerable place. So when I share my story about my most messy, vulnerable place, and they see themselves in mm -hmm. that story, they go, this person understands me. This Absolutely. gets me. When I take that messy moment and I create a shift for myself, but I can also teach you what I learned on the journey out of that mess, they now say, this person can guide me. And so what begins to happen is you create this connection with the right people in your audience and they're saying, that's my guy, that's my person. That's the person I'm meant to work with. And connection happens. So this was the psychology I tell to people. In every story, there's a sale. It's not the sale of the product. It's the sale of you. Mm -hmm. And we know that people, we know that people buy from the person they know, like, and trust. They buy from the person they can identify with. They buy from the person they think they have similar paths with. So what our stories do is they tell people, we've walked similar paths and I get you. Not only do I get you, but that place you're in, I know the path out. I can guide you. Mm -hmm. And after that, when you start delivering content, they're just like, I already bought her. I know she, she got me, she understands me. Let me check out the content and let me see if this is a fit. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I, what I share with people. But it all came through my own journey, right? Mm -hmm. I have to first be willing to tell my story, unpack my story, understand why my story works, and then I teach it. So what I, what I tell people is, I'm looking for that messy mess that came before your business. Because I believe that every one of us, our business is inspired by a solution we had to find for ourselves. Right? Absolutely. Isn't that, isn't that true? Yeah, this is all about yeah. owning, owning a voice that I'd lost, right? Right, yeah. right? So, so yeah. I say every one of us has a, a pain somewhere that we had to solve a problem to. And mm -hmm. we said, Ooh, this is a great business. And we're passionate about it. 
because we needed the answer and we relate to it like somebody also needs this answer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. It was interesting because I remember when I first, you know, the same, same company, I'd be sitting in the audience and listening to the stories on stage and I would literally shrink in my chair because it would horrify me at the thought, because I wanted to be up there and it horrified me at the thought of actually being that vulnerable because I wasn't done with my story yet. So that's another important aspect is that we have to be on the other side of the story before we can share it. Otherwise, what ends up happening is the audience begins to feel sorry for you. Yes. But you don't want that. You want to have the, you travel the hero's journey and you come out the other side. So mm-hmm. it's, I didn't understand that at that time. And, 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 you know, I call that when I teach people, um, earn the right. And I go, you, you, you and I are required to earn the right to be the guide and earning the right means I've done the work Mm -hmm. while I was in my mess that had me no longer be the victim of my mess, but develop the mindset of at first I become the hero in my own life. And then I become the guide for someone else. But I must go through that phase of moving from the poor me of my circumstance, the victim. And we all know the masterful pity party, bring one. Let me tell you how horrible my life is. Then we get that moment where we're sick and tired of ourselves. The pain gets great enough. And hopefully a book, a person, a somebody comes along and says, honey, let me help you. You have your epiphany moment. And then you decide, oh, I can be the hero in my life. Mm. And in the process of becoming the hero, there's some lessons you pick up and you're like, I, now I've earned the right to guide someone else. It's not until you get to that place that the story is available. But this is the other thing that you're also saying, Kate. It's not until you get to that place that you actually are in a position to cultivate your own success. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because oftentimes our victimhood is what keeps us stuck in this vicious cycle. And this vicious cycle is because we've been creating a pattern and not yet either ready or open to learn the lesson that's creating that continuous cycle. And the moment we learn it, we break free. And now we're in a different place until the next lesson comes along. <laughs> yeah. Got yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what is the next level of juicy for you? I mean, you've, 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 tra- you've traversed all of this space and time and you've really, it's the, you know, the, 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 the stairwell, right? The, the mm-hmm. stairway. So what's next first, whether it's one year, three years, five years, what's, What's next for you? Where are you headed? You know, it's, it's interesting because we are in such an interesting time Mm -hmm. and um, things are always changing. And, you know, as everybody has talked about pivoting and doing all these things, one thing that became present to me that was that retirement wasn't really a conversation that was real for me um, in that I didn't want to stop doing what I was doing. However, I didn't want to also have to do what I was doing. And as I began to look at that, you know, I I really began to look at deeper into mindset. And so the whole concept of mindset mastery is really equipping people with the tools to reset their thinking no matter what's going on. Because life is a is a journey filled full of challenges, pitfalls. Um, difficulties. And if you're up to break, break big things, life is going to give you these massive challenges. Absolutely. The question for me was how do you reset yourself so that no matter what's happening, you can get back into this place I call faith, right? Mm-hmm. Where you can continue on your journey of faith, your faith walk towards the thing that you envision for yourself. And so for me, it is really being able to give people a, the process to know when they're out of faith and to know when they are in being the victim. And how do I shift my thoughts, emotions, communication, so I can behave in a way that moves me onto the direction I wanna go. 
And so for me, that conversation is super juicy. It's super fun. And so part of it is, you know, speaking and training and mentoring people so that they become phenomenal leaders. Because as I said, you know, the first person you and I must lead is ourselves. And when we lead ourselves boldly, we influence, inspire, and impact other people. And I truly believe that we're in a time, as you and I were talking off air, we are in a time where independent thought is so necessary. New types of leaders are necessary and leaders that are, that are courageous enough to walk in their unique walk because we all have a purpose. Mm -hmm. We all have a reason that we're here. And, and oftentimes we, we are conditioned to not listen to that inner voice that says, this is your reason. This is why you're here. Walk this path. And your path may not be the path that's popular or your path may not be everyone else's path. Walk that path. And, and in order to do that, we truly are, are being asked to listen to ourselves in, in spite of all the noise in the marketplace, in spite of all the stuff that's going around, around us. Can I be still enough to hear and trust what I'm called to do? And rest. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Rest on that so that no yeah. matter what is going on, it's like you're sitting in the eye of the storm where it's peaceful. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, and this is all happening, but in, in timing, I will know when to take and what the next step is. Yes, and I'm, I've just been learning that the last year myself. So I, I'm, I'm hearing you now. <laughs> and, tr and, and trusting that it may not look like how anyone else does it. No. Um, you know, I, I remind myself that when I am blessed with an idea, um, and I always, I know when an idea is for me because it disrupts me. <laughs> In other words, even if I try to ignore it, it it's, it's like here, it doesn't go. It just is disruptive as was the phone call from Susan disruptive. And so when I'm in that place, I know this is for me. And I remind myself not to go and test it and get approval from other people because it wasn't for them. And because it wasn't for them, they don't have the listening for it. They don't have, they may not have the capacity for it because it's for me. And so if it's gifted for me, I also believe that I have everything within me to bring it to fruition. Will I have to grow? Absolutely. Will I have to expand? Absolutely. Will there be challenges? Well, that's the only way I know the best, next best version of me. And so it is trusting the journey and tr trusting the process and knowing that I, I'm able to grow into the person who can hold and handle this idea. But growth must happen. I must mm -hmm. go on the journey. I must earn, again, earn the right to be the person who receives and puts that idea into the world. So it's, it's a process. Definitely. But it's, but it's fun. Is it not like there is a fun about it. Once we can, if we, if we can sort of uh, back up and, and be in the space of, I will be led, mm -hmm. right. I will be shown. I will surrender. To I will. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's like everything, everything's going to be all right. Right. Yeah. So it's really starting to grasp and understand that. So that's the perfect question to lead into the, I always, at the, at the, at the end of a show is I always like to uh, ask the person, the gift of what is a daily practice that keeps you moving forward mm -hmm. that you can give someone a simple, like if you, you know, doing this every day will help to serve you. What would you. Oh, well, you know, for me, the biggest learn out of my journey of um, not living from a full cup is the first few beautiful hours of the day belong to me. And, and in that time, I work out, I meditate, I pray, I journal, and I read. And I fill my cup up first. And in the filling of the cup, it's my physical care, my emotional care, my spiritual care, my psychological care. 
partly because I know that if I am supposed to be ever evolving and growing and expanding, I must feed this, this place inside me um, in all different ways so that mm -hmm. I can grow. So the ritual for me is, is you know, my, my phone does not get answered before 9, 9.30, although I'm up at five. Mm -hmm. um, not, you know, the only thing you'll hear classical music in my house during the early morning, but that's it. I'm reading, writing, working out, doing, it's my time. And so when I, when I face the world, I face the world full. Beautiful, right. beautiful. So for the listeners, I would say um, just to encapsulate that because we're all unique individuals, what are those things that you can do when you take time out that's so important that uh, feeds you that mm -hmm. you can commit to. And if you've never done it before, then, you know, start with one simple thing that you can make a daily practice that will feed you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and even if you start with a few things and they're five, 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 and you go to 10, 10, 10. Um, I think for me, it's, it's putting those things together, not trying to do, I'll do this now and I'll do this later. It's just carving out that unique, juicy time for mm -hmm. you and, and just stacking those things that, that fill you. Awesome. Beautiful. This has been amazing. And again, I really want to honor you and, um, share my gratitude that you would take the time and, uh, to be on the show of living your juiciest life ever and being such a great contribution to the world and to the listeners today. Uh, I am excited for the next steps and stages of your journey. And I want you to make sure that you please send me the appropriate, the best links for people to get in touch with you, uh -huh. as well as if you've got any upcoming uh, workshops or, you know, what, whatever it is that you have going on, make sure that you send that to me so that I can put it in the description of the, of the Absolutely. podcast. Absolutely. Kate, Kate, it has <laughs> been a joy. I have missed you. You too. And so we will have to make a more of a regular habit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're such a beautiful soul. And um, it was, it was a blessing to have you reach out and say, Hey, this is what I'm up to. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you so much. I'm just very honored to have you. So thank you so much, all your listeners for being here today. And uh, I hope you got lots of juiciness out of the conversation that we had. Suzanne has so much to offer. If you do want to reach out to her, the, her contact details, as we said, will be in the podcast description. So thank you so much for being here. And remember, you are a miracle. Go ahead, start living that juiciest life or amp up that juicy life you're already living. Have an amazing day.